Hi, I'm Ron Balicki, and I'd like to welcome you to my Filipino boxing series. Now, what you'll learn in this series will sometimes look like kickboxing. It'll look like Western boxing. There'll be hand trapping. There'll be throwing, and there's going to be groundwork. Now, I know I said it's a boxing series, but you've got to remember, this is more of a, a, a street fighting uh, martial art, more than a sport martial art. So their boxing is anything they could do with their hands. In this system, it goes under many names. I've been taught uh, terms like uh, you're, you're learning Panatukin, or Panajakman, or Sikaran, or Panadaikin, or Suntokan. Now, they used to, they used to be a big term for them was uh, Suntokan. The, term, the word Suntok means to punch. But they kind of felt when they brought it over to America that it sounded, sounded a little too much like Shotokan. So they changed it and they said, you know what, let's just use Panatukin. Okay, so uh, you'll hear me give different names, and the reason why is my instructor, Dan Inosanto, he had many influences, and they were all from different parts of the Philippines. And they've all had their little terms or just dialects that they would use. Now, a, a little bit of information about the Philippines is there are over 7,000 islands that make up the Philippines. And there's usually about three tribes per island. That's 21,000 different, uh, 21, different dialects or systems of martial arts for that matter. So everybody kind of puts their own little spin on it and we try to honor it and I might have two or three terms for the same thing we're doing. So just kind of forgive me for going into that. But if you're teaching, I think you should know it. That you, you, know, you should kind of know where it comes from and that's what I, I was taught by him and I'm gonna to try to pass that on to you. Okay, so early in, I would say the early 1900s during the American occupation of the Philippines, I want you to think back and you remember there was like Gentleman, Gentleman Jim Corbett and, or, or John L. Sullivan and the hands used to be more out a little bit. So because of the weapon influence of the Philippines, they started to bring the hands in. Now that's one of the things about the Filipino martial arts I find really funny. When anybody ever talks to me about it, they go, oh, you do that stick stuff. It's a lot more than the stick. Uh, the, the, to me, it's for me, I have to say this, it, it, out of all the systems I've ever done, and I've done a lot of them, it's the most complete system I've ever seen. It will handle everything from the staff to the stick to double sticks to knives to swords to firearms. Uh, and then all the way into empty hands and wrestling. And it, it, to me, it doesn't glaze over or, or just kind of skim over uh, different sections. It has a thorough, in-depth section in every one of those areas that I've mentioned. And I, I've seen a lot of other systems say, oh, well, we really don't do that. We don't do that in our system. And uh, that's one thing I like the, about the Filipino martial arts is it does go into it. The cool thing about this art is if you're a young boy, you can do it. It's more kickboxing-like. And as you get older, it's something that will grow with you. Because I see people in their 80s still do this martial art because it's very adaptable to your physical limitations. So let's get going. Uh, we'll train this and we're going to start off with more of the stand-up, uh, more of the kickboxing area, and then we're going to get going into the other areas that I've mentioned. Okay, so coming into the system, usually before class, we'll salute in. I'm just going to go really briefly over this just so you could see it and so you know it. It's still good to have respect. So. The first salutation that we're going to do comes from the La Costa system. Now, uh, my instructor, Dan Inosanto, utilizes this method. And it's really short. It's pretty simple, but I like the meaning behind it. Okay, so what they'll do is they'll come down on a knee. They'll put their hand uh, open under the heart, and they'll put a fist above their forehead. Then they're going to change it, and they're going to put the hand to the air and a fist to the floor. And then the third position is it goes right back where it was, and then they stand up, and then they cup the fist. So the, what I like, the, the, just to kind of put this into someone's head, why we train this art is more because we preserve life. We, we cherish life. So that's right into the bow. So the, the words that we'll say with it, and this is an abbreviated uh, salutation. You, there is a 12-count salutation, but we usually use this four-count for class. So it's, it'll, it'll start like this. I come with an open heart and an open mind. I acknowledge the hand of friendship is superior to the hand of war. I'll take what we learn into our heart and mind and may we shed no blood. Now to explain this, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, an open heart and an open mind. The part I'd like to explain is the fist usually represents war, the empty hand represents peace, so it's always higher. It's always uh, stands taller and more true than war. War is always the last resort, that's why it's lower. So we bring it back into our heart and mind, 
and then may we shed no blood. This is the preservation of life. So we present it as if it's a cup, and this is my heart, and it catches the blood because we don't want to shed any needless blood. Okay, so that's the, uh, the Lacosta salutation. The second salutation that we'll do is from the Lamecos uh, system of martial arts. And I'll do it without the terminology first, and then I'll explain the, what the bow is about. So what they'll do is they'll come down again on a knee, they'll touch the head, they reach out, then they'll touch the head, then they stand up, and then they put their hand down. And what they're saying is uh, that it's knowledge, loyalty, respect, then I'm ready to train, instructor. So the terminology that goes with it is karanugan, pagalan, katapata, nakahanda, sapaksisanan, guru. So if you know anything about the Filipino culture, if you were a youngster or a younger person and you went up to an elder, you would kneel and you would grab the hand and you touch it to your head and, uh, and then you give the person their hand back. And what that is is a sign of respect to the knowledge that they have that you honor it. So you would grab a person's hand. So that's what this whole bow is about, is you, you touch your head, then you grab the hand and you touch it to your head, you give it back to them, and then you stand up and you're ready to train. So I just wanted you to see those two bows. And it's not that I want to impress that upon you that you have to do it, but I just feel that it sets the tone for how we feel in our training. All right, the first section that I'd like to show you is stances. Now, I, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this also. I know you want to get into your training, but just, just bear with me for a moment and take a look at this. All right, the first thing that we do is in Kali, the whole, the name of the Kali, it comes from two words. It's Kamut Lehuk. Kamut Lehuk, Kamut could mean empty hand or they mean body. And Lehuk is motion. So the name of this whole system is body motion. So the word for me to even say stance is not truly correct because you're supposed to be in motion the whole time. But this is one area that, that we're taught at the start is always to be uh, alert. So our first one is at rest position. Usually it will just mean that it's a, a non-combative area and you're all right, but they still stress you to be cognitive of what's around. All right. Then we're going to go into alert. Alert is usually one hand up or the other hand up. All right, I'm not going to spend a lot of time, like I said, but I just want you to be aware of it. This is my alert position. All right, I want it to where my hands can be employed or my feet can be employed maybe to get out of there. Okay, fighting stance we're going to move into. In fighting stance, this is going to more, uh, look more like a Western boxer right now. Is I want that rear heel up. Okay, I want your hands up, elbows in. Okay, so now if you take a look at it here. All right, this is my fighting stance. Chin down, but I don't want your head perched forward. Just want it right here, relaxed, empty, loose hands. Not, don't make a fist and hold them. I just want you loose. The only time you should impact, just like most boxing instructors will tell you, is when you do make your impact is when you fully clinch your fist. Okay, so this is my fighting stance. Just really relaxed right here. I want that rear heel up. I can't stress that enough. Okay, now one of the things that you're going to see in this video is what we call false lead. All right, so right now, this is my false lead, and it appears that I'm still, all right, if you were to just look at my upper half of my body, which a lot of people do, and when we're fighting, I could sit there and fight them, and what they don't see sometimes is I change my lead, but I don't change my upper body. So what I'm talking about is my legs switch sides, but my upper body stayed the same. So now it looks like I'm boxing you, and it looks like this is as far as I can go. Like right there is like, if I put my finger out, that's the, the maximum distance I can go. But because I did the false lead, this will go so much further. All right, so when we're going here, I want you to just think of this. One, and as you're going, you shouldn't be static. I'm doing this for the video right now. But as I'm moving around and they see me move, I'll step, but I still leave this lead. So if you were looking just at my upper half of my body, it appears that I'm in this stance. But I switched my feet, and now I'm here. So now I'll fight this way, and it appears like I can't reach any further, but really I can. Okay, so that's all I want you to do is I want you to think at rest, I want you to think of being alert, fighting stance, and then false lead. When I look at this uh, DVD series, I look at it as a training method for you to start to teach. 
All right, and it's with my hope that someone gets this. Maybe they'll pursue the Filipino martial arts and they'll come into this and they'll start to, uh, you know, get into it deeper enough to where they can become an instructor and show their students. So I look at you as my student on his way up to instructorship. So I am going to force some of the terminology on you. And if you're not into that, just discard it and then, you know, just keep on going. Maybe you'll pick up some good techniques that you can use. But for those who are enthusiasts who'd like to learn a little more, this is what we have to go through. So, first, body positions. All right, the first one is obviously standing. All right, standing, even if it's a fighting stance like this, they call it tindog. Tindog just means to stand up, okay? Next is squatting. If I were squatting over someone or if I were trying to hit or grab on, this is called katin katin. Katin katin is to squat over someone, okay? If my knee drops, it's called la hood. La hood is where I, uh, I, put, I usually drop one knee. This is what we call a three-point stance because you get the one, two, and then the rear foot is three. We usually try to stay away from this because we can get knocked over and it's kind of hard to fight if you get your feet underneath and you can get caught even for a fragment in time and that could mean something really bad to you. So right here, if I got knocked over, I still can brace myself or I can still get my legs out in front of me. Okay, the next one is sitting. So linkud, linkud is to sit. Okay, now sitting, I might be trying to fend somebody off, might be trying to push someone away. You don't know why, at least right now, just in this, I don't, I, I don't want you to sit, but if you have to, this is the term that they'll use. Okay, and then the last one is just lying down. So if I'm lying, this is called higda. Higda is to lie down. Okay, so lying is higda. Then we come up into sitting, sorry, sitting is linkud. Kneeling is lahud. Squatting, katin, katin, and standing is tindog. Okay, so with that, when you hear me say that term, you can scramble back and look at this video and figure out what I'm talking about. But like I said, I want you to know the terms, and I'd like to see someone pursue this to where they can become a proficient teacher or instructor in it. One of the things I love about the Filipino martial arts is the way they break down someone's defense. Okay, we call it creating an opening, and I'm going to go over a few of them. So Willie's going to come in. All right, the first one is the stop hit. Now the stop hit's great. All right, if he were to go, remember I talked about that at rest position. So if he comes in a little bit, and if he's going to punch, he'll go from the at rest. See, and they'll just shoot that in. That's the first one. So when, when I'm there, I'm at my ready, and I can stop hit him. I can do it from here also. If he goes goes in. I can just throw the punch in. Okay, you'll be surprised how many people you can back up, even if I can't touch them. If I just keep kind of putting that out there, you'll get somebody to back off you a little bit. Okay, the next one that they go over is, uh, we'll, we'll just say the hand pat or the hand trap. Okay, so right now, if he has his uh, defense up, maybe he's just really good, solid guy, he's got it up, they'll just trap in. So come on in a little bit. They call us a toppy. All right, a tapi or tapi tapi, it means to tap or, or slap. So right there, I could just trap the arm and hit. Okay, sometimes they'll take both arms. So let me swing you this way. See, right here, if we're here, I might go here. See, because this could just go right into the boxing again. Okay, come on back over. Okay, so that's, uh, uh, well, well, we'll say the hand pat for this. The third one that I want to do is called the ride, all right, or uh, you might say panastas. Panastas is to cut. So when he punches, I just cut it. See how I create the opening? Go real slow. As it shoots in, it just slides up, and then I can go for the eye or I can go with the punch. Okay, so our number three is to cut the line. Okay, the fourth one is just a simple block. And maybe if he hits the stomach, and I just block it right here. Because every, every time he goes, it affords me the opportunity to kind of come back at you. Okay, so just to block it. Okay, the, four, uh, the fifth one is more of like a, uh, just it's a false attack, okay? So what I do is I act as if I'm going to go at him. When I get him to overblock and open, I can go. Or if he goes to pat my hand away, see how he's patting the hand away, I go, and then I can come around it. Once I make him commit, it creates an opening for me to go in, okay? The, uh, going on to the seventh one is changing of attacks, or we say engaño. Engaño might be, I might act like I want the head, and then I go low. Okay, I might go low and then go to the head. I might go high and kick to the leg. You don't know which one you're going to use with engaño. Okay? Then we also have footwork. 
So right now, if he's going to go and if I want to punch, maybe I change it and then I just punch in. Okay, one more time, I just change the line and I hit in. So this is using more, utilizing my footwork to get myself to a safe place to be able to strike back. There are no safe places, but anyway, just move out of the way. Okay, then the next one is pretty good, is if he goes, they'll throw stuff. When he's not looking, they'll hit. So if you have keys, coins, whatever you have, you just kind of lob it at them. So last time, is if I'm here and if this is in my hand, usually they won't throw at the eyes. They kind of throw just above it. Because what I want to do is I want to make him follow it or track it with his eyes. So the minute I throw it and he looks up, bang, we just go. Ready? Okay, so that's going to be my number nine. And then the last one, ten, Willie's going to love this one, is this. When he comes in, they spit. So I go, and then I just go. So if I can get him to blink, that creates the opening for me to come in on him. Okay, so to recap, we have the stop hit where I can just stop hit him before he goes. Maybe when he's first getting ready, maybe before he's all the way ready. <laughs> if his hands are down, bang. If I know it's going to go, take the shot. All right, next one, his hands are up. I just trap. Now I can go. Okay, the next one, come on in a little bit, is when he punches, I ride it. Okay, so I just cut in. Okay, so that's the ride. Okay, if he comes low, I can block it. Or even high, I might just block it here and then attack back. If I know that when he attacks, he opens up, I might just go for the block, okay? Then the next one is going to be engaño. So I go, whoop, and then I hit low, okay? All right, then footwork. When he goes, whoop, I just change my angle, and then I take the attack in, okay? Then we're back to the throwing objects, which I don't have. Can you grab that for me one more time? Thanks. So right here, I just go like that, and then I'm just going to come in with the attack, all right? And then the last one is spit, when he blinks, bang, I just go. Okay? So that's a 10 that I want you to know for just creating an opening. All right, let's look at your opponent now. Let's start to identify some of the weaknesses in his structure. Some things that you want to look for to take advantage and go in and counterattack or score or finish the fight. All right, uh, so let me bring Joey. All right, so now Joey's going to come in. All right, if we're both fighting and we're up and you're going to get somebody, sometimes there's no movement out of them. So maybe they're just locked off. And they're just going to fight you. It's the first thing that will tell me that there's not much experience behind this person. Okay, so right now if he's there and there's no movement, I have my choice. I could come in. I could trap. I can jam the hands. I might be able to kick the leg or just kind of hit and run and move around them. So obviously no movement is something we don't want to do and we would love to have an, our, our opponent do. Okay. Another thing is repeating patterns. So maybe he's got this thing where he likes to jab, jab, cross. So he's coming at me and I just keep seeing him going one, two, three. I'm going to pick up on it and when he comes with that third one, I want you to pick up on it and move in. So if repeating patterns look for. Okay. One of my favorites and I see a lot of people do it are, uh, uh, we're going to go into dictating patterns. So you'll get guys, and I'm going to do this to you, but they'll fight you and they'll move and they'll, they'll go to punch and they go tap, tap, hit. I see it all the time. Watch it. A lot of boxing gyms, uh, when, I, when I'm sparring guys, they just move around and they go, and I know they're going to punch. They tap, tap, and then they throw the punch. Some guys will take a big breath in before they throw the punch. Some other guys will go, and they'll, they'll exhale. Some guys will raise their shoulders. I know they're going to punch. Some guys kind of come back because I know that they want to come in and kick. So look for dictating motions, all right? You'll see people, what are we? We're creatures of habit. We get into something. A lot of people, I mean, if they're honestly training, they start to be with their friends and they do their training and they pick up these little habits and then they go. And you find yourself doing it even, I mean, if, if you're training, right? You're training to fight. You're training this motion. You're burning it in. You're going to do that. Okay, so another one, poor stance. Now, when I go to poor stance, first one is, I'm going to say it's too narrow. So if, you're, if maybe they're walking the tight wire. Look for this. 
all right? Sometimes you can take the angle and you can really trip them up. If they're walking a tight wire, you'll see if we're in here and I go like that and I get the slap and he starts to move, yeah, he'll cross the feet. So if I'm here and I pat like that, sorry, Joe, all right, and see how he crosses. Now he's really in a bad position. He could go down, not because he got hurt, but because of his bad footwork. And once I get him on the ground, obviously I'm in a better place. Other people, wide stance. You'll see guys just stretch it out. Oh, God, man, I, I would love that so much. You just sit there and just wreck his knee, or you could just come in. He's not going to get away from you. He's too wide. If he's got to start stepping, it's just too much to lift it. Uh, he's not centered. The best would be double, like they usually say double shoulder width, and just kind of relax, a little spread. Think of like if there were a, a telephone pole, a pole laying on the ground, and you're kind of standing between it, so you want that distance. You don't want to be on the tight wire. Okay? All right. Uh, so then it goes into poor footwork. Just some guys just don't have footwork. So they, uh, maybe he's going to step to the side and he crosses instead of step and slide. So what I mean by step and slide, he doesn't step and slide. He's crossing. So if he comes in and hits, see, this is another bad situation for me. I'm going to go down. Okay? And then, uh, you know, some people just focus so much on certain areas. And being a good fighter, you're going to be able to lie and make them concentrate on the wrong area, meaning he might have his attention up. Maybe I'm here, uh, uh, and I go up like that. It opens the leg, all right? Or maybe it's too low. He, he got kicked a few times, so now he's starting to watch the leg. I go, uh, bang, and I get, the, I get the punch in instead of the kick. So you want to just watch where their attention goes. You know, some people tend to be lethargic, and you'd, you'd think they wouldn't. You're in a fight, but they, maybe it's just overwhelmed, and they just lock up and freeze too. So that would, uh, to me, that would be p no attention span. I, I mean, at least someone, if ha they had it high, they might have some defense or low, but I've seen other people just lock out and freeze and just get hit because of that. So just be aware of that. And it's just, I just want you to see the, some of the openings that you go through while you're fighting or some of the openings that, that you can take advantage of. Okay, here it is. We are into footwork now. This is everyone's favorite area. I'm just joking. Everybody I know dreads it. Uh, most people would rather just sit there and punch and hit, and everybody likes to avoid this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to give you some stuff that will kind of make it a little bit fun. So just kind of bear with me. Let's get through this together, and I know it's going to help your game, your, your fighting game. So let's start off. I put this triangle down. We're going to get to that in a second. Not yet. First, I'm going to go over basics. All right. In your fighting stance, I want hands up and ready, all right? Now, I'm going to move my hands around a little bit just so you can see my face while I'm talking instead of me being here. So kind of just bear with that. It's not that I'm that sloppy a fighter. Uh, I just want to make sure that you could see me and see what I'm trying to uh, uh, show you. Okay, so now I want your hands up. Don't drop them. Don't be down here with it, all right? So the first one is we're going to take a step, and we're going to slide the rear foot. So now I'm going to go back. I step and slide. So that's my first uh, first in the series. The, the one we use probably most frequently is either to j uh, go advance someone and then retreat. So again, advance, retreat, advance, retreat. Now I want you to double advance. So you're going to step slide, step slide, step slide, retreat, step slide, retreat. Okay, again, advance, advance, retreat, retreat. Okay, so now the second one I want you to slide and then step. You see it? Slide, step. Slide, step, retreat, slide, step, retreat, okay? So you can either do it single or double. Everything is, a lot of times we, we push a student doing it double because sometimes one's just not enough. You've got to really get away from somebody. So I don't want people to get too used to going, oh, I'm here and that's it. If the person's still running from me, sometimes I've got to keep coming at you, okay? All right, so first one again, step, slide. Step and slide back, okay? Again, step and slide, step and slide. Next one, I push advance. One, two. You see how I'm right off that rear leg, it's kind of spring-loaded, and then I just jump forward and then return. I can go one, two, one, two. Now, whatever we do linear, this way we can do horizontal. So I go one, two, so that's step and slide, step and slide, or I could push and push. Okay, so push advance, push advance okay it's actually not advance it's side to side that's okay all right so or we could double it up I can step and slide step and slide step and slide step and slide push 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 
So we have forward and we have backward. Okay, in the Filipino martial arts, it's pretty popular for having numbering patterns. Now, if you train the Filipino martial arts, you'll know that they'll have stick patterns that they'll go through, or knife, or staff, or everything. All right, so in it, we have a numbering system for punching. That's what I'm going to do now. All right, so right now, it's going to be a little long and drawn out. I'll go slow with it, and I'll, I'll do it a few times, let you check it out. Uh, I'm not going to rush you on this. All right, I want your hands up. Uh, I'm... I know a lot of people are already trained martial artists, but this is for a lot for those who are just coming into it. Again, we talked about stance. I want that rear heel up, hands up. I want you relaxed, all right, hands loose. All right, the first one is just going to be the jab. So when you throw the jab, I want you to make sure your hand stays up. Don't put it down. Think of your hand up. So you're going to jab. When it comes back, you're going to throw the cross. Okay, again, you jab and then you cross. All right, so the profile of it, if you look, Chin down, jab, cross. Bring it, kind of screw it out, screw it out, and bring it back in. Okay? That's our number one and our number two. So you got the jab, cross. Now the next one in our numbering pattern is going to be the body hook. So I want you to keep the hand up, and you're going to just twist or torque your body into the hook. So you're going to go body hook, and then you're going to body hook. So at the start, you jab, cross, body hook, body hook. Okay, let me turn this way. Jab, cross, body hook, body hook. Right from there, I want you to uppercut, okay? Jab, cross, body hook, body hook, uppercut. See the uppercut? I'm just going to shoot it in right here. Again, my hand stays up. I, I kind of almost like duck into it, and then I lift. Lift with your stomach. Bring everything up as you uppercut. Jab, cross, body hook, body hook, uppercut, uppercut. So that's one to six right now. All right, jab, cross, body hook, body hook, uppercut, uppercut. Okay, tight high. All right, so the tight high hook, I want you to envision he's right here. You're, you're almost nose to nose, and you pop it in, okay? I pull and I pop it in. So I jab, I cross, body, body, upper, upper, tight hook, tight hook. Again, this profile, jab, cross, body hook, body hook, uppercut, uppercut, tight high, tight high. Okay, moving on now, a little further. Jab, cross, body hook, body hook, uppercut, uppercut, tight hook, tight hook. I want you to punch low, and you're going to punch low. So it's like a low jab and a low cross. Again, jab, cross, body, body, upper, upper, tight, tight, low, low. Profile, jab, cross, body hook, body hook, uppercut, uppercut, tight high, tight high, low, low. Okay, going on a little bit further with it. Jab, cross, body, body, upper, upper, tight, tight, low, low. Now long hook, long hook. So I really want you to stretch open and hook, all right? So it's going to be, if, if he's out here, and if I go, I want that hook just extended and out. Okay, so now profile. Jab, cross, body, body, upper, upper, tight, tight, low, low, long, and then long. Really extend it, okay? In front again. Jab, cross, body, body, up, up, tight, tight, low, low, long, long. Now, right now, come with an overhead now. So it's like the long hook, but I just go overhead and then I'm just going to uppercut from here. Uh, I know that we had the uppercut twice in it, but I believe it's the angle that's different. That is why they, they've added it again, versus like you're doing it low and high with the jabs. It's just a repeat, but it's at a different angle. So we go jab, cross, body, body, 
up, up. Tight, tight, low, low, long, long. Overhead uppercut, overhead uppercut. Again, profile. Jab, cross. Body, body, up, up. Tight, tight, low, low, long, long. Overhead, uppercut, overhead, uppercut. Okay, getting further in it. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, number sixteen. Okay, so now I'm going to go a little bit slower and I'm going to go a little bit further with it. You have the jab, cross, body, body, upper, upper, tight, tight, low, low, long, long, over, uppercut, over, uppercut. Now I want you to backhand and forehand, and backhand and forehand, okay? So it's going to go jab, cross, body, body, up, up, tight, tight, low, low, long, long, over, upper, over, upper, backhand, forehand, backhand, forehand, okay? Now let me go a little bit further with this, jab, cross, low, low, up, up, tight, tight, low, low, long, long, over, up, over, up, backhand, forehand, Backhand, forehand. Now I want you to go overhand, 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 overhand. All right. I know it's getting long. This is just a numbering system. Right now, I make my guys, if it's your beginning level person, you have to only know the first four. Then as you progress, you got to get up to number six, then eight, then ten, and eventually up to the 30. So you're going to get this all right away, but don't worry about knowing it right away. I just want you to see it. Okay? So jab, cross, body, body, up, up. Tight, tight, low, low, long, long, over, up, over, up, backhand, forehand, backhand, forehand, down, 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 down. Then once you hit a high, low, high, you will spin and go high, low, high. That's one to 30, so let's count it out. Jab, cross, body, body, up, up. Tight, tight, low, low, long, long, over, up, over, up, backhand, forehand, backhand, forehand, overhand, 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 high, low, high, high, low, high. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. I know it's long and drawn out, but you'll see, uh, I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how this is employed, a lot, of, especially towards the end, how you'd use the different hands. Last time, slowly, jab, cross, body, body, upper, Upper, tight, tight, low, low, long, long, over, up, over, up, backhand, forehand, backhand, forehand, backhand, forehand, uh, overhead, backhand, forehand, overhead, high, low, high, spin, high, low, high. That's one to 30 in the series. Now that you have the one to 30, I'm going to briefly go over targets. Now, I know you know this, and uh, most novices even know what a jab cross is, but just let me briefly run over it. As it gets into the higher numbers, you might want to see what I'm doing. So Willie comes in. All right, obviously the jab cross are at the face. Okay, so if you were to jab and then a cross. All right, so the first ones that we did were the body hook. So he might hit the body, or he can rock to the other side, hit the body. I know you know this. I'm not going to insult you with this, but let's go a little further. All right, so it was the jab the cross, the body hook, the body hook. Then he had the uppercut and the uppercut. So the uppercut can shoot in right between the hands. All right, it's pretty good. Most people uh, are, are open to the uppercut because the arms V, it just makes a nice little funnel for me to slip through.
okay? So now, if I were head to head with them, that's where the tight hook could come in, or the tight hook the opposite way, okay? So remember, we had the jab, cross, body, body, up, up, tight, tight. Now, the low hit could be the body punches. Either you could jab the body or cross to the body. Now, I know it's a repeat. You had the jab cross to the face, but there's a different target, jab cross to the body, okay? Then the long hook. All right, long hook, if I'm out here, I think I'm safe. Maybe he fakes me a little bit with that jab, and then he long hooks around it. Or he could just swing it out from the rear, okay? So right from there, we went into the overhead and the uppercut. So he hits the overhead. Sometimes my hand drops and then he uppercuts. See, let's make it from the other side. They could see it better. So if he overheads, sometimes if guy will drop his hand, see he's got the chin open here, or if I'm good at covering my head, when he goes here, the body's open for him to uppercut. So that's uh, going into the overheads and the uppercuts. Now, this is where you're going to want to see what we're doing. Uh, we go to the backhand forehand. So when, he, when I jab, he might backhand it away, and it clears the path for him to forehand. Uh, to do the forehand blow. Same thing here, backhand, forehand, okay? The overhead is pretty good because if, uh, if I were to come in, maybe I'm here, he overhead, uh, throws the overhand on the back of my neck or on the back of my head, and it clears the way for him to hammer down on me, usually into the neck or the side of the head. I mean, obviously, you don't want to hit the dome because it's pretty, it could be pretty tough and it might hurt him. But if, he clear, if, if I'm in here, this is where he clears me down, and then he could just bang, hit that. It'd be a good knockout right in the back of the neck, see, or the opposite direction. He clears it down, and he hits it down. Okay, so that's the overhead, overhead. Okay, the high, low, high could be the faint, high, low, high, or it could be the hit they could hit. So if he, if if we have a, a I'll call it a positive. If we have the positive, the connection, he can go down low, or if he goes low, he can come high, and then they just have you split or uh, spin. Sorry, spin for training. Uh, just uh, for the numbering system, they just have you spin. After he does a high, low, high, he just spins. Spin on me. One, two, three. Step one, two, three. And, and the spin is just to, to get us on the opposite side. So that's the one to 30, just the concepts of the hit of where they go. The next thing that we're going to come into is the triangle. So triangle footwork. Very basic. I want you to step on a 45 degree angle. So right now if I'm at the point or the center point, it's not the top point or the bottom, it's the center point, I step on a 45, I'm going to step back, I step on a 45. Again, I want your hands up. So you're just going to go right back and forth. Go on the left, go to the right. Pretty simple, not too hard. Left, right. So 45, 45. I'm not going to spend forever on it. I know you can get that. It's pretty simple. Now let's reverse it. Step back on a 45, step back on a 45. So right here, this is it. OK. So when we advance, they call this the female triangle, right here. When we go back, it's the male triangle. Okay, so right there, that's the female and the male triangle going to the left, going to the right. Now, I just want you to go into circling. So we're not, we're going to lose this triangle for a second. Don't worry about that. And I just want you to just curve, and you're just going to step and curve. It kind of looks like the Muhammad Ali thing a little bit, and then we'll reverse the direction and just curve. Okay, those are the two that I want you to go into now. Get those down. They're going to help you a lot. Now that we're in the grappling section, I, I feel compelled to show you all the sectors and the way we look at it and our theory on what we call the clock approach uh, to having a person on the ground. So Joe, come on in. All right, he's going to lay down. Just lay down center right there. Okay, so right now, obviously, I mean, most people are uh, in martial arts do a little bit of grappling nowadays with the whole NH NHB craze. And uh, I'm probably telling you stuff that you already know, but just for those who aren't grapplers and want to have a little idea of what we do or how we look at it, this is where we're going. 
Okay, we have the overturn, uh, 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 Joe being face up. All right, this is what we call the overturn position. I am going to be uh, a cross body. Now, we try to think of sternum to sternum. I don't want to be here, and I don't want to be past it, stomach to sternum. So when you do this, I want you to think of having your weight down on them. Some people don't like the knees bent. Some people put them back. That's okay. It depends on what you're doing. There are all times where you'll have to climb the person a little bit. Okay? So from this, this is paying attention to do what we're calling the upper body portion. So now I can put my weight into them here. You see it? I kind of stretch that one leg back, post here. And do you feel that in there? Talk to me a little bit. Yeah, so it's a little bit, uh, it's a little windy, and that's part of what I want, is I want him to have a hard time, like he's fighting to breathe and fighting me at the same time, okay? All right, so now, obviously I can go left and right, I won't do that right now, but just, you, you get it, we can transfer sides, okay? So, we'll also turn, depending if I know there are no weapons involved, we will turn and we'll pay attention to the lower body. Let me twist you a little bit this way. Okay, so... There are times I will be here. I know he can hit me. I'm aware of this, and I always hear people say, well, what if he hits you? He can hit me anytime he wants. There's dangers when I'm this way also. Okay. So right now, a lot of times they'll hide on this leg, and sometimes they'll just grab in here and hold. We're not going to get into all the locking. I'm just telling you why I'm doing this. So we'll pay attention to what we call the lower body. Sometimes the lower leg locks will be in here also, where I just stay low and I try to like put a, put a little pressure on the knee here, okay? We also have the mount. Some people call this the schoolboy position or the schoolyard because when you're a little kid and a guy gets on you and he starts to wail on you, okay? So we're gonna go into this position a little bit and then we have what we call nowadays the guard because they say both knees are guarding the kingdom, okay? So we're gonna deal with this position also. So I just want you to be aware of where we're going. Flip over. So now, I can have him down, face down on the mat. So you know that I can mount or I could just work everything in, in here. I'm just being, be, uh, trying to like make you aware of where we're at. Now, anytime I want to roll him over or uh, roll back over on your own. If I'm here and uh, every, every system has an arm bar. Ours is no different. We have it. There are a couple things that we do different and that I really like for the street. But uh, I'll get into that in a little while. But I, I want to just first give you the theory on what we do. I will never try to armbar and just step over. All right? He's not going to stay there. He's going to fight, spin, do whatever he can. So in, in our system, what we'll do right from here, if I'm here, I try to roll him up onto his side. Then they take it. Then they'll fall back into the armbar. So we always try to get him up either on his right side, roll over, right side or left side. So when, I, when, when you're doing this video and you see me do this, I'm going to ask you, get him up on his side. It's harder for him to counter. One other thing that we do is if I'm here, I usually just don't lay back. A lot of times I pick him up and then I fall back with it. You see it? And then I'll just go back into the lock. I'm not falling on my back. I got that mic back there. I don't want to hurt it. Okay? So, or hurt me. Uh, so right now, when I tell you to go on the side, come, lift him up. This puts it on. See, I can put other locks on and then fall back, but I just don't step over with him here. He's not going to stand for that. He's going to counter me, and he's going to give me a fight, okay? So remember, upper body, lower body, mount, guard on his left side or right side. Can't stress enough how important it is for you to be aware of these sectors and how to deal with it. All right, let's get into the lead hand series now. Willie comes in. All right, all this is is to teach you how to deflect or parry or block the jab. It's just dealing with the lead hand right now, so we're isolating. All right, so when Willie comes in, if he jabs, the first one is just to catch it. Now, normally my hand wouldn't be down here. I'm just kind of getting it out of the way so you can see what's going on. All right, so this is the catch, or they call it the cook. So when he, he jabs, I catch it. Then I'm going to return it. He catches it. So we turn it into a game. He's just going to punch. I'm going to punch. Good. All right. So now if you look at what we're doing, I'm not reaching real far out for it. If I were to do that, he's going to slip it. I'm going to get hit. Not a good thing. All right. What I want to do is I want to 
discipline myself to reach out about this far. If he fakes me, I'm not chasing it. All right? Really important. Can't stress it enough. Try not to, uh, to reach out too far for it. Discipline yourself to where if you think it's coming, you lock out at that point. If, it isn't, if it's not there, your hand's still here to protect. If I go too far, I'm never going to make it by the time he scores. So back and forth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, on and on, whatever you want to do. All right, when you hold it, loose, how can I say this? Loose but firm. What I mean is I want the hand relaxed and loose, fingers in. I don't want you taking it and hyperextending your fingers or your thumb. So I just kind of like leave my hand in, just kind of loose, relaxed, not, not too flaccid to where it could get jammed back. So the first one is just de cup. So one, two, three, four, five. All right, the next one we're going to go into is called pa'awas. Pa'awas is parry. So if he punches, I just, little parry. Let me swing this side. Okay, just so you can see. So when he, when he jabs, I just parry it right here. You see it? So, I, again, I'm not pushing too far past center line, meaning like if his nose and my nose were matching, I don't want to block it past it because he will not stand to it. He's going to go somewhere else. I want to make it feel as if he's still scoring in. If I move his hand two inches, and I move my head, just put it, if, if I uh, move his hand two inches, I just move my head two inches, it's a miss, okay? So if he punches, we just go right here. I punch there. So just a little parry right there. And just, just there and play. I mean, uh, it doesn't matter. We can do this. Willie and I have, I can't even count the many, amount of hours we have. And I mean, we'll talk about everything while we're doing it. It's just, I mean, it's just something that will do. You can have a conversation while you do it. Just, just train it. You know, the more you play with it, the better you're going to get. If you just sit there and say, oh, I know that, and you don't do it, the timing, there's a lot of benefits. Even pro baseball players still pick up grounders. You need to just really drill this and burn it into your memory. Okay, the next one. Okay, so now we had the, the catch. We had the parry. Now this one looks like the parry. But when it comes in, it just scoops it a little bit. Let me swing back around again. Okay, so when he punches, I just go right like that. This is called paglibut. Paglibut makes a little circle, okay? And then I'm just going to, for training right now, I'm just going to jab back. Later, I might come in with this hand. We're not there yet. All right, so one, and then Willie's going to do it. So we just go with the paglibut back and forth. So just a little scoop out, okay? I, when he punches, I don't want to scoop it too much up. I don't want this elbow raising that much, and I don't want this. What I do is I almost draw it and misguide it. It feels like it's still coming in, right? It drags you forward. Absolutely. Okay, so when he goes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the pugly, but just a little scoop. Okay, that's going to bring us to our next one. Now, there are times I will do a big scoop. They actually call, uh, call this waslik. Waslik, uh, the, the way I was taught the term, is if a fly landed on your arm and you kind of flick it off, brush it off, or there are crumbs on the table and you uh, just swoosh it off, that's waslik. It means you're kind of throwing it away. Now, the difference between that and paglibut is the paglibut just does a little bit. The waslik throws it. So if he punches, I just go like that. So we go back and forth, go back and forth, one. There. So this one swings it out. Now the reason that I feel it works and I'm not going to get hit with this is he's got to kind of catch his arm. When we really get into it, I throw it and then I, I'll return back. Okay? So you just throw it out. So it's just, it's like Pugly but a little stronger. You want to mm, get that flick out. And his arm, he's got to catch his arm before he could come back with the hit. Okay, so that was, uh, that's going into waslik. The next one we're going to go into is called panastas. Panastas, the term is, I believe, cut. At least this is what Willie teaches me. He's, uh, he speaks the language. <laughs> okay, so, so uh, when, they, when they punch, you just cut in. Okay, so we're just going to go back and forth. He's going he's gonna to go, you go, <laughs> and I go. Okay, that's okay. Two, three, that's it. So we just cut in. That's it. So that's going into panastas. Okay? Now, to, to close this up, I go into the gunting. So you're going to learn the gunting on each side of the bicep. First one is I hit here. Let me spin you. All right, good. Now watch this. So he's going to jab, I parry, and the gunting destroys the bicep. 
Okay, at least I hope it does. Okay, now for training, be careful. You don't want to nail it too much with the knuckles. Uh, I, I go through this all the time, and I got, I'm going to do it again for this video. When the Americans first came to the Philippines, uh, you got to understand, like, Army, Navy, the big sport was boxing. And this is, I'm talking 1910, you know, like early John L. Sullivan days. All right? The hands were out here. They used to toe the line, if you know that term. They'd get on it, and they'd just beat each other until one man dropped. Then they asked the Filipinos, hey, you want to spar? You want to get in there? You want to fight? And they said, sure, we do that. And they got in, and, they, and their hands were up, and they were moving around, and <laughs> here, the, here are these Americans going, you know, kind of stand still, you know, they're trying to trap them. But the idea was they took from knife fighting the concept of knife fighting, and they put it into their empty hand system. So if I were in a knife fight, I wouldn't hold my knife out here. It's a good way to get my arms carved up. You, they have to be in, no matter if I'm in a, four, uh, like we'll call it a fencing grip with the point up, it'd be here, or the reverse grip or ice pick grip, and the point would be down, and they'd fight here with it. You can't leave your arms out here like this. So they, they fought like that, and they were moving. They used footwork, and it really changed boxing the way that we look at it today. You could see the influence, the Filipino influence in it. So with all that said, uh, oh, well, to go a little further with it, I'm sorry, but to go further with it is uh, they, they did the ginting. So the Americans would watch them, and they would hit like this, or they would hit like this. They would sit there and work their arm this way or this way, and it was almost like a joke the way I understand it. The Americans would go, look at that, man. He doesn't even know how to punch. He's going to break his wrist if he hits. They didn't understand what they were doing, the philosophy behind it. So uh, I want the camera to come in here on uh, Willie's bicep. See, the concept is they would angle the fist. Do you see that? Okay, they, they would hit this way. They didn't want to hit this way, or, or uh, they would go to the face, but if they were going to hit the bicep, they wouldn't just hook it here. They would just angle it. They would just clip like that and hit it here. Or if this other hand came in, the other hand came in, please, they, they'd angle the fist this way. Let me spin you around for that. They'd angle the fist this way. You see, because if I hit this way, there's nothing. If I hit here, he's not going to like it a lot. Okay? So when we would go, we go back, uh, back and forth with the gunting. I just want you to split and hit, uh, hit it. So when the jab comes in, still move like you're using the paalis, but just add the hit to the bicep, okay? And then Willie's going to do it, and then I do it. There. So and a lot of times, if you look at what Willie's doing, you can slap it. You can just hit it lightly. Sometimes I'll hit it, and I'll just kind of flatten my hand. It looks a little weird, but if I keep doing this, he's not going to like it, and he's going to start to hit me, and I don't want that to happen either. <laughs> so we go one, two, three, four. So it's just target practice. That's all you want to do is just hit the bicep and then give it back to him. Hit the bicep, give it back. Hit the bicep, give it back. So we just play with this right here. Just target practice. He's learning to get his head out of the way. See, Willie is moving a little bit. He's not, I'm not doing this. Look at where he can be scoring me as I do it. I see this a lot. Get your head out of the way. Get out of the way. So we kind of fade back a little bit, okay? So that's the gunting. So we're going to say that's what we call the split gunting. Now, when he comes in, this is the vertical gunting. Is when he punches, I hit here. So I'm hitting the tricep. For training, I just go here or I just leave it open. Okay, so we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Same theory. I can go attack here or I can attack here. All right, so he can go right underneath it. Or, or, I'm sorry, or you can hit the bicep itself. Do it again. There it is. Okay? So that's our second. So let me go to the last one now. There are more, but this is the three that I want you to have. We had the split, vertical, now I want horizontal. Okay? Horizontal outside. So when he punches, horizontal, horizontal. So this one I fade out a little bit, and I just pop the, uh, I'm going more for the tricep. Okay? Right there. And I hit. That's it, okay? So now, here's the big thing that I've heard out in the martial arts world. A lot of people are like, oh, that stuff, it really doesn't work. You know, when was the last time you've seen it in, uh, like, the UFC, the Ultimate Fighting Championship? When, when was the last time you've seen it in whatever kind of fight? The thing that I say with it is, even though it's out there, there's a lot of people who do Filipino martial arts, I don't feel a lot of people truly understand it. I don't know if I fully truly understand everything in it. I'm still researching a lot. But by my training with uh, my, my guru, Dan Inosanto, he, he'd always impress upon me, don't stop and see 
what, you know, if it worked or not. I always call it admiring your own work. Don't admire your work. If we're here, and if I go like this, and I go to look to see if it worked, and it didn't, he's going to clean my clock. You need to keep going. If he goes, or if I go, if I go, I need to just keep going. And if it got it, it got it. If it didn't, it didn't. You don't know if it's going to work or not. But the idea is, all I'm trying to do is open up the line. I'm trying to get him to pull that arm back a little bit. If I go pat like that, it might open up the line for me to go. If I stop to see if it opened up, I might suffer for it, even if I did damage it. Okay? You don't know. So you got to kind of just keep rocking and keep going with this. Okay? So just to recap all of them, we had the catch, we had the parry, you had the paglibut, you had the waslik, you have panastas, Gunting split, vertical, horizontal outside. Okay? That's as far as I want you to take this right now. Okay, we're going to go into what we call the humpak paiwas. All right, humpak means like the wave of an ocean. So you think of that curl or the way it kind of like just moves along. And pa'iwas means to get out of the way, okay? Or to parry it, get, get away from it. So humpak pa'iwas, right now I'm just going to do it kind of static so you can see it, but there are two versions that I'm going to show you. One stays on a 180 degree line, so it's like a straight line. So it's not like a fighting stance where I told you not to walk the line. That's not what this is about. Right now, I want you to envision yourself on, on the rear base of this uh, hourglass that I have on the floor. So I'm going to swing this leg around all the way to where I'm pointing the opposite direction. Then I'll step and I'll swing back. So this is the humpak paiwas on what we call the 180 line or just the straight line. Okay? So I always envision if, uh, if I were here and something were coming in, I'm clearing it and getting out of the way. Okay? So this is humpak paiwas. So all I do is I just have the students just go one, two, step one, two, and see I'm going from the left lead to my right lead to the left lead to the right lead. Okay? That's on the flat line. Now the next one I want you to envision a box, kind of like if I had a line on here and uh, on each end and we made it a box. So I want you to think of being up at the top of the box, and not that you'd be this far, I'm just trying to uh, show you that I'm up at the top base but I would step here. So now if you look, I'm stepping to each corner of the box. So I step and step. So if I had to get away, I'm just moving away. I could be deflecting something and just getting out of the path of it. Now this is used in everything they do, from knife to stick to empty hands. So this is humpak paiwas. A lot of people who do capoeira say it looks like a bad jinga. Like I didn't know what I was doing with it, but it's not the jinga, that's why it's okay. So. Right here. So I step, swing back, step, swing back, step, swing back, step, swing back. So the first one is on the 180 line, switch my stance, switch my stance. The opposite one is on the box. I step back, step forward, step back, step forward. That's the two versions of humpak paiwas that I want you to have. In the Filipino martial arts, kicking is, it's different. It's the only way I can explain it compared to any of the other systems like Jeet Kune Do or Thai boxing that I've studied that do a lot of kicking. You have to think about the Philippines. Everyone in the Philippines usually has a knife, from what I've, I'm told. And it kind of makes a lot of the kicking arts obsolete. You got to think about it. If I had a knife, and if he round kicks me, I just go, hmm, and I just cut that leg, it's going to change the art. Okay, so a lot of the kicking in the Filipino martial arts is not to the head, it's usually not anywhere above the waist. It's like the waist and below. Because people have knives, they feel you're too off balance. If they have the knife, it's easy to stick you. Okay, so, and you got to think about it, they also have toe knives in the Philippines. Like if he's here and we're boxing, they just go poop like that. And if he has the little knife between the toes, he just punctured them. Or if, the, uh, the, if it's reversed, the stance, they go poop like that and they just get you in the groin a little bit. And I'm sure if I had, there's something that's similar to a nail that goes between the toes. I go like that to him, 
I'll bet you I just changed the outcome of the fight with that. Doesn't take much, okay? So let's look at a little bit of the, uh, the kicking. Now the SIPA is one, uh, very popular because it's pretty safe. Even if he has the knife, they go whoop like that and they can kick you, okay? So this is the first one that I want you to have. The SIPA kind of sweeps in and kicks. Now the term SIPA just means kick. It doesn't mean like round, diagonal, crescent, anything like that. It just sweeps in kicks. There's a game, if, if you know the Filipino culture, it's a ball, and it's sipa, and they kick it. It's like hacky sack that we have, but it's a big ball, and they have a volleyball net, and they play. Um, and it, all it means is the kick. It could be any kick. So that's the sipa right there, okay? Really, I went boom, and I would pop that in. Okay, so we're going to play a game. When I do the sipa, it sweeps in. He's going to lift it, and then he's going to return the sipa to me. This would stomp me into the floor. So I go one, he lifts, bam, that puts me in. What this is teaching him is in Kali they have drills where I elbow, and if I were to elbow him and he return the elbow back and score, they swing it and they give it back. You see it? That's covered in the hubud section when you cover that. But it's kind of the same deal here. When I kick, he doesn't let me get away with it. Just because I scored doesn't mean I'm down and I'm out. It just means he has to recover and keep going. Okay, so I like it because it's a conditioned reflex. Ooh, you got me, I'm gonna get you right back. And I, I totally believe that they do get you. You paid for a chance to get them back. Okay, obviously I'd rather you get them and them not get you. But if I did score, he off balances me and makes me pay for what I just did to him. Okay, so that's the SEPA drill. So they'll go back and forth. It looks a little ridiculous, I think, but it trains you a lot. They just sit there and they just go back and forth with this drill, okay? So if you get a chance, I'd like you to just work that with your partner for a little while. Okay, so now, the other type of uh, uh, kick they have is called yatuk. The yatuk is a stomp, okay? Let me back up a little bit over here. Okay, so they just stomp right in, so he could just stomp. So you just do it back and forth. Hand should stay up and you cover. So you gotta think about it, if it is a knife culture, and if I'm scared, I, not that I'd want to be this close to him, but I could possibly go here and stomp or just get the SEPA in and stay maybe at a range where he couldn't get me versus me going like that and have him cutting me or stabbing me, okay? So that's why they use these kicks, these types of kicks, uh, kicks a lot, okay? So the yatuk just stomps, okay? So we just stomp like that, okay? So just train that a little bit with your partner. Okay, the last one I want to show you is called sikud. Sikud is also the round, it's a round kick. It's it just, it's another way of saying kick. It's like, a, if you think of English, I could say I hit him, I punched him, I clocked him, I struck him. You know, there's a lot of different ways to say that you went out and put your fist on somebody. So it's the same thing here is I, I sipa, I sikud. Okay, so you don't know which one you're going to use. So the sipa, will, I mean, uh, this could, we're going to put it mid body. So again, he kicks. I'm going to kick. We're just going to ride it for the first one, okay? So just, just to get it in, ride, ride. Now the difference I've seen in the kicking styles were C-lot and Thai boxing. I say Kali falls somewhere in between there, all right? Muay Thai, they love to blow through everything. C-lot, when they kick, they like to stick to everything. So Kali is kind of in between. It looks like a Thai kick to me, and then they just stay and they cut the line and they try to take you down. Same thing if I kick Troy. One, he just goes in, that's it, and he would take me down. So right now, just get used to it and just kick back and forth. One, two, three, four, five, all right? After you do this a while with your partner, I want you to put in destructions now. So if he round kicks me, first one, I pat it right into my knee. Can I do it one more time? Slowly, I just pat it right in there, see it? So he, uh, we use the forearms to block the kick, and we just drill it right up into the knee. Troy's going to do it, you do it, right there. Just go back and forth. Okay, time. Okay, so now that's our first destruction. That's the most basic. Now we're going to use the rear knee. So I just drill that in. So he's going to go rear knee right in. Bink, right there.
front knee, rear knee, rear knee, okay? All right, so now you have two. You have the, the concept of using the front or drilling the rear. Let's go to the next part. Now I can hammer an anvil, they call it. This one kind of scares me. They'll use this hand to cover, but they hammer anvil in. So if I do it to you, Troy, I'll do it to you. Right there, okay? So when he comes, I just go right here with it. That's it. So bang, they just hammer down on it. I feel this one takes a little more sharp shooting, uh, sharp shooting to get. Be careful, but train it. Doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. Just means you should train it more. Okay, so after we have the hammer and anvil, we're going to go back to just the front. When I pat it right here, but I'm going to add one piece to it. I'm going to pat it and kick the support leg. He is going to pat it and kick the support leg. So one, two, and just stomp it. One, two, and I stomp the support leg. Really, really slow. I pat and I stomp that support leg. Pat it, stomp the support leg. Okay, last one I want to show you for now is you're going to pat it, rear leg, side kick. So he pats it, rear leg spike, and then side kick the uh, support leg. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, two. That's it. So let's review. Sp uh, just pat it into it, pat it into it. I can spike it, spike it. I can use the rear leg, rear leg. Front leg to the kick, front leg to the kick. Rear leg to the side kick, rear leg to the side kick. So work those. I think that you'll find that it'll help you a lot. It'll definitely make someone not want to keep kicking you if you do spike them and then counter. We're going to go into focus mitts right now. This is one of the first main series. It's to me one of the most important series. This is from the LaCosta system, the LaCosta system of Kali. So we call it the 1 2 series, so, or the jab cross series. This is our basic series. It's not so basic, though, but I'm going to get you through it, okay? We'll take it four at a time. So when we come in, this is the way I usually run my classes. I make them learn four, and then they'll go on with that for a while. And when I feel they're ready to move on, then we bring them into the next group, okay? So the first one, uh, let me, I'm going to put you on this side, Troy. All right. He's going to parry. He's going to go to the inside gunting. So I put this pad on, if you notice. That way he doesn't have to worry about his, my, my safety as much, and he can start to like just give it a little bit and get some good training. These are padded enough, and with this, it, it helps. It doesn't stop everything, but it, it's not bad. It's pretty good. So parry, inside gunting, elbow. He wipes the eye, goes to the throat, shoves me away, cross, hook, cross, kick. Told you it wasn't too basic. Okay, the, to be, in all fairness, this is probably the hardest of all 12. So it's kind of nice because they get it out of the way right away. All right, so again, Perry and Gunting, then he elbows. See, the eye gets wiped there. He's going to pull the head in as he goes to the throat. Now he just shoves me back and goes into the punching. Okay, Perry Gunting, elbow, eye, throat, shove. One, two, three, kick. You can tell that shove, just a little pop. Because that way, if he's here, if he just went to my throat, if I'm going to go to do something, he takes that thought out of my mind by popping me a little bit. So it's not like he's trying to shove me away. Just, just a little bit of a, just to stop me to where he can get a, a break in my motion to deliver the blow. So parry, gunting, elbow, eye, throat, shove, one, two, three, kick. Again. Sorry. It's okay, keep going. Last time. Good. Okay, so that's my first one. All right. Not too basic, like I said, but pretty good. You could see he's not waiting to see if the gun team worked. If he goes one, after he gets a hit, he's sinking right in right away. He's just, it's just to me another road stop along the way to the end of this fight. You just want to get to the final destination. So you just keep getting those little stops, little stop hits, and just after a while, hopefully they're accumulative and they'll break down my defense and where he could take me out. Okay, number two, put you on this side. 
He's going to parry. He does the gun thing again. This time the rear elbow sinks in. You see it? His feet didn't change yet. He, uh, this one, maybe he felt I was a little bit closer to him. Parry, gunting, elbow. See now he's going to hack right from there and step. Look at what it does to my feet. Okay? Hopefully, if he hits me, it's going to put me down. So one more time. Let me get you in mark. Okay. Parry, gunting, rear elbow, step in. Now, my head's usually about here, so he's going to throw the overhead. Uppercut and an overhead. Do it on the, uh, on the mitts now. Okay, so parry, gunting, rear elbow, hack. One, two, three, and I put the kick in. If he's got me here and he's hitting me, why not deliver the kick there too? Okay, so come on back in. That's it. Come on. One more time. That's it. That's the first two. So again, review. Come on in. First one, parry, gunting, front elbow, eye, throat, shove. One, two, three, to the kick. Second one, parry, gunting, rear elbow, hack. Overhead, uppercut, overhead, kick. This lays the foundation for all 12. Now, let me tell you the common theme. When I was coming up in this, my instructor would tell me this is the hardest and the easiest system to learn. I want you to think of this. Some of the, so, with some people, they get it right away. Other people, it confuses them. So hopefully, you'll get this. All the even numbers are going to be hacks. So whenever I say a number two, right here, so it's an even number. He hacked me. All the odd numbers are going to be a push. Right here. See, he pushes. That's all the odd numbers. One, three, five, seven, on and on, right? Okay, so you have the one, you have the two. Let me swing you over. Number three, virtually the same thing, but remember I said number one was the hardest? Virtually the same thing as number one, except you don't come in with the elbow. It's a long range technique. One, gunting, shove. One, two, three, kick. Told you it was easier. One, two, three, one, two, three, kick. Again. Good. One more. That's it. Second one. I mean, not the second one, the fourth one. Easy. Parry, gunting, right to the hack and the step. One, two, three, kick. Again. Parry, gunting, hack. One, two, three, kick. If you notice, each time he steps in, he's trying to trip me up as he's stepping in. Okay, just go a little bit. Good. Good. One more. That's it. So let's review all four. Parry, close range, so you elbow. He did the throat, shove. Second one is with the elbow to the hack. He steps with the hack. Can't stress enough, step with the hack. Third one, long range. Fourth one, long range with the hack. That's it. So that's one to four in the one two series. Okay, coming back into the focus mid series, this is the one three series. So the one two series was a jab cross. This is the jab hook. So we name it a one, a two, a three. So one three series. So Joe comes in. All right, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to just get used to him trying to hook you. So he's going to jab and he's going to hook. I just want you to cover. One, two. Put it on me a little bit. All right, time. The next part, he's going to do the same thing, but I, I jam the gun, meaning I stop that fist from firing. So one, two. One, two.
All right, time. If he had this off and there was a fist there, one, I'm on it, okay? I don't want it to fire, so I put my hand on it. So go fast. Okay, time. Grab your mitt. Thanks. Okay, so from the one, three series, this is going to be one. This is going to be two. The next thing that I want you to go to is I want you to swing your arm down. See how it brings this over? So one more time. One, two, I swing it. I'm not done yet. One, two, as I'm swinging it, I elbow. I wipe the eye. One, two, three, and round kick. Again, one, two, elbow, eye, one, two, three, round kick. One, two, swing an elbow, wipe the eye, one, two, three, round kick. That's it. So slowly, one, two, elbow, eye, one, two, three, Round kick. So every time I elbow, I wipe back. Okay? Next one. Next one's going to look virtually the same, except this time maybe he hooked over a little bit. So one, two. So maybe it's an overhand more than just the hook. So one. Now it's hard to bring it all the way down. So when he goes, I meet it up, pull it down, elbow, wipe the eye like before, three hands. And I kick. One, here. So I meet it, pull, meet it, eye, one, two, three, round kick. So slowly, one, elbow, pull, elbow, eye, one, two, three, kick. Now you gotta understand this. The third one that I did, when it came, I wiped it down and elbowed. This time, because it's up, I'm meeting it, pulling it, elbowing it. That's the difference, OK? So it looks the same when you're doing it. Big difference while you're doing it, uh, while you're performing it. <coughs> Excuse me. Next one. One, he's going to hook. I just hyperextend. I want to wrench it. I let it go. And kick. One, two, hyperextend. One, two, three. Round kick. One, hyperextend. Last time. One, cover, hyperextend. Release. And kick. Okay, moving on. Next one. I'm going to snake like I did before. This time I dig underneath. Now watch this. I'm going to roll to the ground. Now, if I were doing this, I would hold the lock, come over, and I put a chicken wing on him. For training, I'm just going to let go, come up, he'll stack the gloves, one, two, three, and I just get up and clear myself. Let me do it again. One, cover, hyperextend, dig through, sit and roll. Let's say I lost it, I didn't get the lock, one, two, three, just get up, and clear myself. That's what I want you to do for the next one. OK, so now, one, two. Let's say I snake it. He punches. Slap that right into him. I just want you to reap him right here. One, two, three. If you want, you can kick if he's good with that. Come back up. OK, so he, one, two. I snake it. I want to He punches. I trap it. So I just sweep it, put him down. One, two, three, and boom, kick it. Okay, so that's the next one that I want you to go into in the series, okay? So the last one, one, two. I just want you to sweep the arm down. You could sweep in front, set them down. One, two, three, and just get out of there for training. One, two. Swing it, wipe the legs, step down. You could also just kick if you want to. One, two, swing. Wipe, set it down, and boom, if you want. Or, I know I said this is the last one, but too bad, here's another. One, two, I can elbow, I can go to the back, pull it, and then I just let him hold. One, two, three, and if you want to kick, you kick. Okay, so again, I elbow, wipe, 
one, two, three, and I kick it. So that's the one, three series. Uh, it just, it's always good to not just get stuck with a, uh, four uh, straight line arms. Sometimes you need that hooking and how to deal with that, so this will give it to you. Okay, so now we're moving along. We're going to go into the jab and the cross now. So everything up until now has just been the lead hand. So Troy comes in. This is the six sectors that I want you to know. The first sector is going to be outside, outside. Do you remember the panastas, that ride? We go one, two. I'm just doing it on the left side and his right side. Again, one, two, again. So what I look for in this is I want to see uh, when Troy puts it out there, I just don't want him to be comfortable doing that. I want to see a little bit of a jar in him when he goes one, two. So you feel that deflection. You'll see it in his body a little bit. Remember, I'm trying to score with this. We'll go slow. When he goes in, I'm trying to uh, slide all the way in and hit the eyes. So that's my first sector. The second one, one, I'm just going to pick it up two times. Now, I can come back with the hit or just go into my boxing, but one, two is number two. Work my chin. One, two. There it is. One, two. One, two. See, this can go right here, and then I go continue in. All right, last time. One, two. Okay, number three is redondo. So now if you're a stick fighter, you'll know what I'm talking about. But you're just making this little orbit right here. So when he goes, I hit it, I hit it. This one kind of tough to go through. So hit it, hit it like that. Go easy on your partner and just go lightly. But you, you'll see after a while, you're not going to like that. So they just hit no matter what comes in. It can be done left hand or right hand. But just for this series, I require my students to be able to just do it with the left hand uh, during my testing, so that way I know what they're doing. Of course, everything can translate left or right. So number one, slide up, slide up. Number two, one, two. Number three, one, two. Okay, this is going to bring us into number four. When he punches the four, I go inside, then inside. Okay, so now you got to remember, the number two went outside, inside. This one just stays in, in. Okay, so again, one, two. One, two. This can go slow. One, I can wipe the eye as I go in, or I can go one block and then come back to the eye. Either way, it's fine. Okay, so again, one, two, three, four. Now we're going to go five. Five cuts in and cuts in. Now, what's the difference? All right, again, I'll refer back to number two. Number two went in, and then it went to the inside. Now we're going to go in, I mean, sorry, out to out. Again, one, two. This is where I pass center line. I come in and then I, I just cut through. It goes right there. Okay, so let me spin it around. All right, so watch this. It goes outside, 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 inside. The redondo is the double wrap down or you double, double strike down. Number four, inside, inside. Let's do that again. Inside, inside. Number five goes outside to outside. Do you see it? So if I pass center line, uh, freeze on the first punch. If I pass center line, see that hole that I create or that open gate? He's going to come through it here. It, it, uh, do, uh, push to the outside. Uh, use the forearm. Panastas. Yeah. There. If he goes to the outside, it doesn't make sense for me to go around because he's going to be right there. So if he pushes outside, he opens that gate, and he's just going to be able to pick me up right through here. Okay? That's going to lead us to the last sector. It goes outside to split. You see it? And you've already done the split on the lead hand. Remember when we attacked it or I went to the face? So you go right here and then in. So it goes right here and then in. One more. One, two. So all of them together. Out, 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 in. Redondo, in, in, out, 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 split. Okay, the next section I'm going to bring you into is called Who Bud. Uh, it's pretty controversial. Even the name's controversial. Uh, the term Who Bud means to get undressed. So you got to be careful who you say it to. We're not going to get undressed. Well, the way we use the term is if your hands get tie up, tied up, how to untie them. Okay, so that's what the whole game's about. 
Uh, there's a, there are people out there who feel it has no value. They say, ah, oh, it's not really fighting. It's like a game of patty cake. And I tend to disagree with them uh, very much so. I use it a lot. And I feel if you watch any no-holds-barred fight, you'll see some form of arm man or hand manipulation to tie someone's arms up. We just have drills for it. So I'm going to bring Joe in. Okay, our first drill is called one for one. Now understand this. It is a, a weapon system also, so we number the angles. The angle one, the angle two, three, four, five, on and on and on and on. So the one for one is I am delivering the angle one. So it, it's not a chop. I'm not chopping him. I could, but it's not. All right, maybe I'm grabbing him. Maybe I'm hooking him. Maybe I just have my hand out and I'm trying to fend him off. So what he's going to do is he's going to ra uh, raise his arm, and he's just going to leave his hand relaxed, but fingers pointed at me. That's what I want for the first drill. If he were to have his hand in, it, br it, it automatically drops the elbow. Let's say even it leaves it up. Up or down, it just makes this weak, and I can collapse it. Right now, the strongest he can be is by using this, uh, this structure. Skeletally, he's in a line. He's using all the right muscles to be as strong as he can be to where a lockout, to where I can't collapse that, versus lockout. You can collapse that in. You're only, your bicep's holding everything. Here, it's not the bicep working. It's your entire body behind it. So when we do this, the first one is I reach in. Uh, you, we'll make it a chop for now. It doesn't matter. It could be. Somebody might do this to you. You don't know. So I come in with my little chop. He is going to bridge this over. He will trap my arm, and then he chops back at me. I'm going to let him do it again, step by step. He stops it. The bridge comes up. We'll say the salute, because it looks like you're saluting. This hand uh, removes itself, traps my arm, and comes back at me. Now it's my turn. I stop it. I bridge it over. I trap him, and then I deliver it back. So now we just make a game of it. Go on. So right now, the game is just to get that cadence timing with each other and just play this game of Hubud. Now I'm going to go fast a little bit so you can see it, and then I'll slow it down and explain it a little more to you. All right, let's slow it down. I stop it. I bridge it, trap, then I go in. He stops, bridges, traps. So this is the drill. One, two, three. Now, if you look at it, when I bridge it, I'm not pulling him over. Then it turns into a game of muscle. You're going to get really sore doing it. What we do is when we play the game, I just kind of place it. See how I can remove the arm out now because this, this takes all the power and then I trap. Okay, so this is just the game of one for one right now. See the term who but we tie up, I'm tied, I untie. He ties up, he unties. That's it. So this is our number one. Okay, so now it's going to bring us into the second one that I want you to do is one for one, since, which is it's confusing. Not one for one, but one for one. So think of number one, number four, number one. So if the angles are one, two, three, four, five, the four is here. So what we're going to do is he's going to go, uh, just pass me over. I'll start it. I go one, four, one. Then I bring it over. One, I could go palm up. or I go palm down. So it's basically the same drill, but we just put this little body hit here. Now, I used to hate this. I thought, oh, I will never use this. It feels weird. But you tend to do a lot of things that you think won't work, and you pull them off. It's funny. I have many instructors who go, God, I hate that that worked. I don't like that technique. you know. And, and I always kind of laugh the irony of something working for people when they're not really thrilled about doing it. But I mean, I, I just think it's really cool to mature into it and be able to pull that off. So uh, on one for one, we're just going to go here. So if I went like that, that could be the fake, or it could be I, I am trying to hit. But I, maybe I'm trying to get this reaction out of him. We'll play with that more later. I'll explain uh, a little more in depth. One for one. One for one.
Okay, let's slow it down. One, four, one. One, four, one. One, four, one. One, four, and one. So that's the one for one drill. Get that down. Okay, so now, number three. Number three is what we call palasit. Palasit means to pass. So if I were at long range, I might not want to use this technique. I might say, oh, it can pass. If I were at close range, I don't want to use this technique because I could pull this hand right into my face. So right now, the palasit, all we're going to do is just pass it. Really simple, easy. I don't think it takes a lot of explanation. But this is, if I'm going from long range, maybe he's got to lean back a little bit and just get rid of my hand. Simple drill, but again, it's like a baseball player. They still pick up grounders every time just because they're a pro baseball player. They go, no, 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 coach, I don't need to do that. I'm good at grounders. You've got to keep it up to stay current and to keep the timing and keep that, just keep your edge sharp. So this is the palisit. Okay, palisit just passes. And now it's going to bring us into our fourth and last one that I'm going to show for now is called segung. Segung means to stop it. So he just stops it. So we just stop it right here. Okay, so that's segung. Okay, palasut, segung. Okay, so now we're going to end it with I want you to just start to mix all four. So we just play the game, right? And you want to make it fun, otherwise, you're not going to keep doing it. So, it's okay. So you don't know what you're going to do, you just do it. <laughs> I want to bounce. Okay, so slowly I can mix up all the variables in there. Okay, and time. Okay, that's the first set that I want you to have. Get that down. We're going to come back later and give you a little more hoobud. Now we're going to go into what we call standing grappling. Uh, in our grappling system, every time we apply a lock, it's called kunsi. All right, so we're going to go into the kunsi lock flow. All right, so right now we're going to start off with jab and then the cross. So throw them at me a little bit. One, two. Again, one, two. One, two. Now, if you remember early on, when I first started, I started to show how to, uh, how to deal with the lead hand. And one way was one, we did the elbow. So now I know I'm applying it to the rear hand, but obviously whatever I do in the front can be done to the rear. Okay, so when he goes one, I hit it. See it? He's not going to leave it there after I hit it. He's going to pull it back. One, and he pulls back, I chase it. As soon as I know it's back, and if I did get a good mouse on it, when he pulls it back, I get on it. All right? Obviously I know this is still live and he can hit me with it. Let me put you, put you on this side. So one, boom, right there. So once it goes back, I go on it. Everyone has this lock. Almost every system has this lock. So some I've seen like this, others I see like this. Doesn't matter. Others I've seen here. Right now, we're going to lay our hand on it. This is the number one. If he turns his elbow upward, I'm going to hook. This is the number two. This is what we call the chicken wing. I did this on the lying on the floor. Okay. Number three goes here. I extend it up. Number four, I hit it up. The five rolls down. Okay, let's do that all again. So here, bang, it goes back, I chase it down. All right, that's my number one. My number two. Now check this out, I put my hand palm up and I let his wrist drop into it. I keep the contact here, never giving it up, and bang, I hyperextend it there. If I don't feel I've got it good, I go to the next. If he turns his arm, I roll around it. This is the next one. Okay, that's where I ended it. So come on back over here. Okay, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. You got that? Do it from this side. One, two. Chase it down. Right here. Lift, hyperextend roll it over. Okay? Last time. Parry, elbow. When it goes back, I chase it. I'll run after it if I have to to get on it. I'll put you on this side. 
So this is the one right here. If he put, lifts the elbow, I just hook under. This is the two. I let it come up and drop. See how I maintain the contact, never lose it? Pop it up right here. Hyperextend here. Roll it over right here. Okay? Take it that far, and then we'll come back later in this DVD and give you a little more to work on. Okay, coming back into the lead hand series, Willie comes in. All right, to recap, we had catch, I parry, little scoop, throw it away, slide up it, split, underneath, and backhand. Now, to go a little bit further with it, I want you to go to the vertical gunting, and then we're going to uppercut. So you just want to pump the uppercut right through here. When Willie does it, it was vertical gunting, and then he just shoots the uppercut. He could do this two ways. One, he could vertical gunting and uppercut, see how he's just covering, just like a boxer would. Or, if he feels it, he can grab, if he thinks he can get hold of that arm. You know, this is pretty fast in and out. Uh, some people are real fast in and out with that jab. But if he feels that he, went, whoop, and it, he got a catch, yeah, grab it. Because you're not in a boxing match. You want to just grab it, hold on to the person. You got a lot of things that we can go into. We're going to hit that later. Right now, vertical gunting, uppercut is the next one in the series, okay? Then I want you to go back to the split gunting. So I split, and this hits right here in the bicep, okay? So Willie goes, split, and see this? He just hammer fists it right here. So let's do that a couple times. Go one, two, one, two, that's it. One, two, one, two. So we just go one, and I get the hit right here. One, he gets the hit right there. Okay? Again, don't admire your work. If we go one, and just keep going with it. If you get it, you get it. Great. If you don't, you know, keep going. It's life. Right? You don't get everything you want. So, right from here, after we do the split and the hit, the next one it looks the same, but it just a little bit scoop, and then I hit it here. So, w Willie will scoop. He opens the line, and then he just hammer fists it. Okay? This is the Puglibut, and I hit the bicep. Puglibut, hit the bicep. Let's do that a little bit. That's it. So that's the Puglibut. Same hand hits. Okay? Willie Puglibut, same hand hits. Now we're going to do the Puglibut again, but this time I hook it with the opposite arm. Puglibut, and it just, uh, just hit the bicep with the opposite hand. So we say Puglibut to the hook. Sorry, Willie. There. That's it. So right here right there. So we just train that little scoop and you hit the bicep. Okay? Going into the next one is you're going to go Puglibut and they elbow it. Now the elbow can go anywhere from, they'll elbow the hands, see they'll go like that, or they'll hit here. You can hit here, hit here, or in if you could reach it. So when he goes one, you hit whatever you can get to. The whole thing about the Filipino martial arts is they treat everything as a target. Where a lot of martial arts, if they're here, just freeze for a second. My whole object is to touch his, uh, his center mass, meaning almost like if you were looking at a gun silhouette, the head and the body. They don't look at the arms as a target. In the Filipino martial arts, what they say is, like, come on in a little bit, they'll say, oh, he, boom, like that. They'll, they'll take it because they feel this is the, uh, the fang of the snake. If I could take a fang out and if I could take the other fang out, the rest can just be yours. And it doesn't mean you're going to do it with one shot. That's not what I'm saying. It's just the theory is, uh, I always like Jake LaMotta. Now, if, you ever, uh, if you've ever uh, been into boxing or if you've seen Raging Bull, the big thing with Jake LaMotta is by round four, he looked like pulp. I don't agree with this fully, but the guy would just beat him for four rounds. And all he would do is he would take all his punishment in the face and he would just sit there and just keep hitting the bicep. But by the fourth round, that guy's arms were rubber. He couldn't do anything. And then Jake LaMotta would just come in and bing, 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 and the guy would be gone. And he won a lot of matches. I'm not saying to do that. All I'm saying is if, if he presents the target, hit it, and then just keep going. You know? and, and I'm sure if you hit it, it's, it's not going to be healthy for it. Even if I don't hurt it much, I'll bet you there might be a little less sting 
on that punch because this could be cramping just a bit. And you hit it a couple times. I've seen some really good guys who really got this down and they could damage you with it. So again, we go one from the Pagli, but I can hit with this, uh, the same hand. I can go one, hook it, or I can elbow. And the elbow is anywhere you can reach it. Okay? All right, so now Willie's going to recap the whole thing for me because I, I like his angle for this camera. So he can do the vertical gunting, uppercut. He can go split gunting, hammer the bicep. Okay? He can go puglibut, same hand, that's it. Then he can puglibut and hook it. Or he can elbow it, puglibut to the elbow, and it could be anywhere. If I were in more, and if you could touch the face, by all means go and touch the face. Okay? All right, so train that, come back, and we're going to give, uh, come back in a while, we're going to give you more. We're going into the rear hand series now. The rear hand series will look like the one two series that I showed you on focus mitts earlier in this uh, series, but the difference is we're not going to wear focus mitts now and we're going to go to takedowns. All right, so uh, come on in, Troy, take a look at this. All right, so we're going to start off the first one. One, two, I elbow, wipe the eye, go to the throat. Now, instead of me shoving him off and going into my punching series, we go to the takedowns. So the first one, one, gunting, elbow, wipe the eye, go to the throat. This snaps the elbow, this knees. I just want to step, turn, and then we're going to take him down here, and you can continue with the punching or go to a submission. Let's try it here on this side. So, parry, gunting elbow, wipe the eye, go to the throat, snap the elbow, go to the knee. Step, turn, push, and then you're just going to go right here. You can also go into the lock, just like I've done before in this video. Okay, one more time, real slow. So, I go parry, gunting, elbow. See how the eye gets wiped? So, you think about that. Mm, that was in his eye. It's, it's going to take out both eyes. You've got to remember, if one eye gets damaged, there's sympathy pain in the other eye. The other eye shuts. So if we're going here, if I hit this, if I hit this and I wipe the eye, I can usually get both eyes to shut. If not, maybe I can go with that hand. So this is, they, they slap that and they go here. So you can go to the throat or you can go to the eye. Snap the elbow, knee. This should soften them up to get to the throw. And then we just go to the lock right here. Okay, last time. Switch sides, please. So you go, parry, gunting, elbow, wipe the eye, go to the throat, snap the elbow, Knee, I know it sounds like a lot. Step down, step through, and let's just go to the lock right here, okay? The second one in the series, you're going to hit and it opens. Now, this is what I mean. The first one, maybe I felt like this shoulder uh, had to stay this position. This drill that I'm doing, the rear hand series, is more of a shoulder drill to me. So if I go one and my shoulder open, see, this is going to punch an elbow. So I go one, two, then I'm going to elbow hit. It, it sounds crazy, like I wouldn't be able to get it, but it goes fairly fast. Okay, so one more time, go one, two, one, two, three, four, then one, two, three, I step in, take him down, drop the knee, or go to the punching. Okay, coming up, other side. So we go parry, gunting, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, grab, sink, throw it, and drop the knee. Okay, let me do this slowly. Parry, gunting, one, two, elbow, backhand, one, two, three, and then this would be the throw. Again, parry, hit, right here. So go pop, pop, right there. Let it just ricochet, <clears throat> like that, okay? So we go parry, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, grab, throw him down, drop the knee into the face, okay? The next one is the split gunting. You've seen this already in the one, two series where I did the split. This time we just shove one, two, three, and we usually go right here, bump, and take them down. We'll just end it right there for now. <clears throat> so after I do the split and the shove, if I feel he, he, he locked off, like uh, if, if he's like just trying to bear in and stand his ground, after I go here, I just come right down here. Look at this. I grab both ankles if possible. My shoulder bumps that leg for the takedown. All right, let's try that again. Okay, parry, split gunting, shove. One, two, three to soften him. Come right here. Just bump it and take him down. 
Try that again. Right there. One, two, three. Grab, pop it in, take it down. Okay? So you just go right here and turn it over. Both hands pop the ankles. Your shoulder rolls right into the leg, knocking him down. Okay, the next one, virtually the same. After I do the gunting, I dungab. This goes back into what you've already done. Hooks, dumps him over, and knees. Just a different entry. Try this side. So here, I do the gunting, and this time I backhand here. The last time I did this, I did the gunting, and I just shoved him. This time, do the gunting in the backhand. Cross up or cut, cross, grab, take him down, and kneel. Okay? Slowly, one, two, three. I just pull. Uh, let me explain this a little better. After I get the gunting, I tug as I hit. Again, one, two, I tug as I hit. Cross, upper, cross, grab, roll them over, drop the knee, whatever you have to do to keep going. Okay, so now we're going to say that I, went, I go one. I go to hit, but he blocks this time. I want you to go here, hit the bicep, uppercut to the face. One, two, three, grab on a knee. We're going to take him down on the other side. Put the lock on, okay? So one, two, he blocks, I hit uppercut. Now I have a choice here. I can go into my punching to take down here. I could take down here, but I'm going to have you go actually one, two. After I hit and I uppercut, let's go to the figure four. We haven't done that in a while. So right here we go to the figure four and then the lock, okay? This is actually the number five in the system. One, two, hit right here, up, figure four, and lock, okay? Last time. Parry, gunting, back right here. So I hit, oh, right there. And then lock, and I put the lock on. Slowly, parry, gunting. Here, right here, I hit up, and then here. And I keep saying slowly and going fast. Let me go slow down for you. Parry, gunting. I back and he blocked it. I grab it and hit, up, elbow, and then I put the lock on. Do you have that? I'm going to give it to you one last time. Parry, gunting, hit. See, I pull and hit up. See, this could snap that right there, bang, and then just pressure it down, and then the lock. Okay? So try those first five. Come back, I'll give you a few more. We're going to go into the triple jab drill now. This is going to get pretty big, and I actually have a lot of fun with this. I think you're going to like it. All right, Troy comes in. I'm going to show it first empty hand, empty hand, then I'll put on some mitts and I'll hold for Troy while he does this. All right, the way we start the drill is he'll jab, I jab, he jabs back. So we just go one, two, three, then he'll go. That's it. So back and forth, just one, two, three, one, two, three. Then I want you to start to stagger your response. Now I want you to think of uh, like music. Think of beats. Boom, boom, boom. Then I want it boom, 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 or boom, boom, boom. And just, just mix it up, okay? So if we go, that's it. So you see the way we're kind of stagger it? It feels uncomfortable, but that's the way the fight's going to be. You're not going to just go all the time. Bang, bang, bang. It's not about that. You're going to stagger, you're going to stutter, and you want to trip up your opponent. So that's the way that you should play with this. So you should just play together like this. And then. That's it. So it, it doesn't feel good all the time. After a while, I get used to it. You get used to your partner. And just spend like a round, a good three minute round. If you do this every time before your workout, you start to pick that up. Okay? So now, the second one that I want you to do is going to be one, two, three. So if he hits me, one, two, I attack his bicep, just straight into me. One, two, right there. So if I do it to Troy, one, two, he hooks the bicep. One, two, hook the bicep. One, two, hook the bicep. One, two, hook the bicep. That's our second one. Okay, pretty simple. So slowly again, I, uh, he jabs. I jab back, my jabbing hand leans up, uh, I lean out and I hook the bicep. End it there. One, two, 
lean out, hit the bicep. One, two, lean out, hit the bicep. Okay? Our third one, same thing. One, two. He hits the bicep, he's going to cross up the face. So I go, one, two. I hit the bicep, I cross up the face. Okay? Troy goes, hit, hit. That's it. Whenever we're not wearing a focus mitts, I always say go to the face and make them defend. Uh, this is one thing I always try to get past is, what, watch this, if, it, if we do the drill, if you punch, one, two, and if I go like this and I start aiming at his hand. I mean, it's okay if you're just drilling, but just start to go there because it's going to start to train him that he's got to get that uh, parry. Okay? So the next one that we're going to go to is virtually the same. It goes one, two, I want to go split to the face, cross. One, two two, split to my face, then he crosses me, okay? One, two, split to the face, cross. One, two, split to the face, cross. Okay, then the next one after that, I'm going to repeat these again and again and again, so you'll see it over and over. The next one after that goes one, two, I do the same thing, but I hit the body, then I go to the face. One, two, he goes to the body, goes to the face. One, two, body, face. One, two, body, face face. That's it. So let's repeat these on the focus mitts. So I grab the focus mitts, we come back in. So you remember our first one was just the triple jab. So now it goes one, two, three. That's all he's going to do. Just one, two, three. You can go, yeah, one. That's it. I want to offbeat it all the time. Just don't always make them feel great. You want to kind of make them anxious and then back, okay? That's the first one. Or if you just want to get a little sweat going, you can just go like that if you have to. For maybe for a new guy, or you can go and then right back fast. Kind of bang, bang, there, okay? Or and then right back in. Doesn't matter, or just make them work it. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's it. Okay, that's our first one. Now, this is where I start to take some punishment. It's good to wear the elbow guard, which I don't have on right now, but that's okay. One, two, three. That's it. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's it. One, two, three. See how he's attacking the bicep. Next one. He's going to go one, two, hook, cross. That's it. Next one, he's going to do split entry to the face. Now, there's two ways I could do this. One, two, he could just simulate that it goes to the face and then get the cross. Or I could go one, two, put it here on my chest and let him hit the chest. It's up to you. It's whatever you're comfortable with. I trust him that he's not going to take my teeth out, so I'll just let him simulate. <laughs> That's it. Slow it down. One, two, split, go. Again, one, two, split, go. One, two, split, go. Last one. Takes the stomach. Let them touch you a little bit. It's not going to kill you. Just don't, you know, if it's too hard, say, oh, dude, lighten up, back off, whatever. You know, and I'm sure you're going to cooperate back and forth because remember, when we switch over, it's my turn, and he's not going to want me to do it. It's like sparring. You kind of have a partner who respects you, you have a good, good learning time together. Then there's always that guy who likes to go a little bit harder, and what do you do? You got to pump up the volume, and then pretty soon it's a fight. <laughs> so, one, two, split to the stomach, cross. One, two, split, cross. That's okay. That's it. That's it. So to review, triple jab, one, two, three. Second one, one, two, hit that bicep. Third one, one, two, hit the bicep, cross. One, two, split to the face, cross. Last one, body, cross. That's the start of the triple jab series. All right, we're coming back into Hoobud again. I'm going to take you through the next four. So Troy comes in. 
All right, so now, to review, we had one for one, all right? Hopefully that you, you've gone back and you've rehearsed this, you have it down. Then we had number one, number four, number one. Okay, and then you had the palisade where we just passed, right? And then we went to sagung. Sagung is just stop it. Okay, so if we just roll in one for one, we're going to go into the next one. The next one is called humbak. Humbak, do uh, you remember the footwork that I did, that humbak paiwas? Same deal. It means a wave, okay? So when we go into this, I'm just going to roll around. You see it? Okay, now, time. All right. I have many influences in Filipino martial arts. I have one main influence that's Guru Dan and Asanto, but other people put their little twist and spin on it, and they're not wrong. It's just a different way of doing it and a different way of thinking about it. Some, some things you'll think are valid, maybe some you, you think are not. If you can pull it off and make it work, good for you, right? The whole point's to get success in a strike and not getting hit back. So I'll show a, different, a couple different variations for you. One, with the umbak, I can just roll it as we did at the start. Okay, another variation is they go for the eye jab. Do you see that? I go for the eye jab. Okay. Another variation is if I go for the eye jab and I feel that this is coming at me, they'll move it out. So he'll swing me out. So they go, what's left? Okay. So just to show a few, I mean, uh, you don't know what you're going to feel when you're in there in the mix, but if you feel that arm moving, you got something. And you should know it. You should play the variations. Uh, there, there are a lot of variations that I felt at first. I went, ah, oh, it doesn't feel too good. But after you get used to it, things come around and you start to feel better with it. OK, so we have the Ambak as our first variation. All right, so now we're going to go back to the one for one. And we'll go to our second drill that I want you to have is double two. So remember the angle one the angle too. So we're going to come out with a backhand. So slowly, what I do is I bridge it up. And instead of me hitting on the angle one side, when we do this drill, I will hit on the angle two side. He's going to press that back in my face. And then he throws a backhand. I just come out. Pretty simple. All right. So we go one, two, out. All right, so slowly. Troy, you do it once. One, two, out. I'm going to do it. One, two, out. Troy does it. I do it. Slower. Do it. One, two, out. I'll do it. One, two, out. OK, that's the double two. That's going to bring us to the next variation, triple two. So when we go, virtually the same. We go one, two, you guessed it, a third two. And then you remember that first drill that we did, uh, uh, the one for one? You just go right back into it as I throw the last backhand. One, two, and then he hits out. You see it? So if you do it to me, Troy. One, two. See, I just hit it, and then I come out. OK? So think of it like punch ones. It's like that gunting that I taught you, and then I just come back into the drill. OK? So you go one, two, that's it. And then he's going to go at me. One, two, and then out. That's it. I'm going to do it to you. One, two, that's it. And then you do it to me. One, two, and then out. OK, that's the triple two. OK, so the triple two is just the outside gunting on that third backhand.
Okay, the last one that I want you to have is what we call five for five, or the number five. So uh, the numbering system, one, two, three, four, the five is the thrust. So we just say you punch. So the, the punch is dealt with with the peri or the pa'awis. Remember the outside gunting? We do the outside gunting to what we say the salute position, and then I punch back. Slowly. Parry. See the hits here for training, I just lose the hit. I salute, trap, punch. Okay, parry, salute, trap, punch. And that's it. So, in to, to review, in review, humbuck. Yep, just humbuck. Double two, Troy can do it to me. One, two. Triple two, one, two, and then he comes out. He could do it to me. One, two, and then I come out. And then we just go to the five. And that's it. So now you have eight variations. Work those, come back later, I'm gonna give you some more.